Good morning, church. Good morning, church of God. Buenos dias, iglesia de Dios. It is an honor and a, uh, and, and, a, and a joy to be again here together celebrating Jesus. So please, I will invite you to join with us into this song of praise to the Lord because I believe that the Lord has been good to you. He has been good to me. The Lord has been good to me. Amen. And I am sure that he has also been good to you. So please stand and join us into praise as we praise our Lord. Aleluya, te adoramos, Señor. team you may be seated yes we are here to worship the Lord and for, for all that he has done for us we are here and gathered to worship him this morning and him alone we come together to fellowship together with one another but also to express our worship and praise to him before his throne and as a live church we want to offer hope life and love in Jesus name to those that we come in contact with or interact with on a regular basis. And so again, welcome to this time of worship, this beautiful fall morning, I'll say. It's been gorgeous outside and enjoying the weather. Just coming off vacation, it's like, okay, back to reality. So, but it's good to be back. It's good to be back. 
So again, welcome. I just wanted to highlight a few announcements that are in the bulletin. First of all, carpet cleaning. Uh, this week, uh, the carpets will be cleaned throughout the church, and we need help uh, to remove furniture and equipment beforehand and then put it back once it's dry and taken care of this week. So if you could see Delmar after the church service this morning, uh, if you can help him with that or help us with that, that would be great, and he'll give you the details as well. So I think Delmar is in the nursery this morning, so afterwards you can work your way that way, or if you see him, uh, let him know that you can possibly help out. Also a reminder for this coming Friday, August the 25th, is the um, snowball and I'll say winter carnival uh, that's happening. I think you can still sign up. There's a sign up sheet out on the uh, bulletin board uh, to come and have a good time of a ice cream social and, a, and snowballs in the middle of August. That could be interesting. That's this Friday at, on the 25th. The following day, <clears throat> another event for uh, the kids, uh, a truck ride. Uh, Jerry and Jean are inviting the children slash youth five years old or older to join them for a Mack truck ride. And I've been on that truck. It's fascinating. On Saturday, August the 26th, weather permitting. As you notice, there's no canopy. So if it's raining, we'll see. Um, plan to meet here at the church at 145 and they'll return roughly around four o'clock. Bring a cushion or a blanket to sit on unless you're really brave. So again, the opportunity this coming Saturday, August the 26th. Any questions, just check in with Jerry and Jean. Uh, just received an email this morning um, from Renee Zimmerman uh, informing me to inform you as a congregation that Margaret Martin uh, died last evening at Landis Homes. So details will follow um, once we know uh, what is happening but for services. But just to keep the family, Leon and Loss and Renee in your prayers and Elvin and Laverne and the rest of the family as they walk through this journey of uh, Margaret's homegoing uh, so I just wanted to let you know uh, about that. Like I said, stay tuned for details. And finally, a reminder for our th Wednesday evening prayer time. We meet here at the church at 7 o'clock. We gather and we're working through psalms. We look at a psalm each evening and talk about how that affects our lives or what we see in the word. And then we also have a time of sharing needs and praise items and a time of prayer as well. So again, this Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock here at the church. This time I'd ask for the uh, August verse to be brought up, and I invite you to stand as we and ask pa Pastor Reggie to come as well. We will first do it in English and then also in Spanish. And like we've done in the past, we'll do the citation, verse, and citation. So please join me. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Galatas 5, 22, 23. En cambio, el fruto del Espíritu es amor, alegría, paz, paciencia, amabilidad, bondad, fidelidad, humildad y dominio propio. No hay ley que condene estas cosas. Galatas 5, 22, 23. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I invite Johnny Kurtz to bring forward the Tithes and offerings, just a reminder that um, you can give both here with the basket as you come in. If you failed to get, when you came in, there's another basket at the back. Uh, you can give online through the Tithely app or just dropping it here at the um, office throughout the week. As we come to a time of prayer, I was struck by my devotion this morning, and I felt the Lord saying, Jeff, you need to share this 
with everyone. Uh, it's, just a, it's a brief devotional I have um, from Our Daily Bread. It's entitled, Be Still, from Psalm 46. And it's written by a David McClash, McCaslin, uh, and I thought it was very appropriate. Coming off vacation, I almost challenged myself, did I do this? Listen to what he writes, and see if you can identify with him. We've created more information in the last five years than all of human history before it. And it's coming at us at all times. The author of a book uh, called uh, The Organized Mind says this, that we have become addicted to the hyper-stimulation. Hyper-stimulation. Hmm. Struck me. The constant barrage of news and knowledge can dominate our minds, making it difficult to find time to be quiet, to think, to pray. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Many people find that a quiet time is essential part of each day, a time to read the Bible, Pray and focus on the goodness and greatness of God. When we, like the, Psalm, the writer of Psalm 46, experience the reality that God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble, it drives out our fears, drives it away, shifts our focus from the world's turmoil to God's peace, and creates a quiet confidence that our Lord is in control. No matter how chaotic the world may become, we can find quietness and strength in our Heavenly Father's love and presence, love and power. Hyperstimulation. It's a new word for me, but I think it fits our culture well. I don't know if you'll identify with that or uh, say that, yes, that's something happening. And it's part of it is this device we have with us at all times. It's handy, but yet it can also be that thing that takes our eyes off the Lord. So as we come to a time of pastoral prayer, I'm going to open up with a time of silence. Many times we get nervous with silence, but yet <laughs> God asks us to remain silent. So I want to open our time of pastoral prayer with a moment of silence, just pondering what the Lord has done for you, how good he is, how great he is, and push away all the distractions, uh, the hyperstimulation that we've been exposed to throughout this week. So let us pause in a time of silent prayer. Father, you are present in the silence. Forgive us for those times where we have not paused and have been silent before you, with you, dear Lord. Forgive us for our overaction, our busyness. Dear Lord, you want to be with us, be a part of us. You want to give us your peace in your silence. And so we just thank you for that opportunity. And as we go forward, we want to strive, be silent before you, to take the deep breaths and see you in the silence, dear Lord. We thank you for that. 
We thank you for your presence. And in your presence, dear Lord, we can come to you this morning with our prayers of concern, of blessing, whatever it may be, dear Lord, because you hear us. You hear us because you love us. We thank you for that. And so, dear Lord, as we think of loved ones throughout this past week and situations that are happening, we think of Margaret Martin family as she has passed and is now with you in heaven. We just pray for the family as they uh, celebrate her homegoing, but also the grief that comes with that and missing her presence, dear Lord. You're the God of peace. You're the God of comfort, and we just pray now peace and comfort with the family. We want to lift up and pray for Janelle and Lena as they're flying home today. My understanding, they're on a plane over the Atlantic Ocean right now, dear Lord. We just pray for safety as they come home and as they will be sharing the awesome things that happened in this trip, dear Lord. We know that they have been blessed. And so we just pray for their safe return, dear Lord, and the blessings that you've given to them during this time and the people who were blessed by their ministry as well. And so we just pray for safety, dear Lord. Also, dear Lord, we think of this as a time of the year, exciting time of the year of students going back to school, teachers going back to school. This week, a number of schools are, are starting and so we just want to pray a blessing upon each student who will be starting a new chapter of their life, whether it's a new grade, a new school, whatever it might be, dear Lord. We pray a blessing upon them as they go. May your uh, peace and your uh, shield be with them as they go about their learning, dear Lord. Bless them in, in what they will be experiencing. And for the teachers who will be involved in the lives of these students, be with them as they prepare and teach as well. And for all the other workers, the bus drivers, the cafeteria folks, the janitors, the, the principals, all who are part of the uh, system of education, may you bless them and encourage them as they um, bless and teach and encourage the children as they go back to school. So we pray a blessing upon each one of them. We just thank you all that you are doing, dear Lord. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Padre de la Gloria, Señor, te damos las gracias esta mañana por congregarnos y darnos la oportunidad de poder exaltar tu nombre aquí en tu casa, Señor, con cada uno de estas hermosas personas que tú has designado, Señor, día tras día, domingo tras domingo, de poder venir a alabarte. Padre, levanto una oración por René y su familia, Señor. Sé tú confortando las vidas de ellos, Señor Padre. Gracias, porque para aquellos que han caminado contigo, la muerte solo es ganancia. Y te pido, Señor, en esta hora que el luto que hay en esta iglesia seas tú, Señor, que la confortes. Padre, gracias, Señor, te damos por todos los educadores, por todos los alumnos, Señor, y por todos aquellos que se preparan a, a ir a clases, Señor, durante este mes. Oramos, Señor, por cada uno de estos estudiantes que tú le dé la sabiduría, la inteligencia, Señor, para poder llevar sus asignaciones, que todos tengan buenas calificaciones, Señor. Oro por los profesores, que le impartas, aparte de la sabiduría, también el temor hacia ti, Señor. Que los principios y la buena moral seas tú, Señor, estableciéndola en la vida de ellos para que puedan impartir Padre de la gloria, lo correcto a esta sociedad. Padre, gracias por la paz que tú nos has dado, porque a pesar que los días se pueden ver tornados difíciles, 
todos los que están confiando en ti vivimos siempre contentos y esperando un nuevo amanecer Padre oramos Señor en esta hora por Jerusalén oramos por la paz de tu pueblo Señor y desde acá Señor te decimos gracias que a ti sea toda gloria toda honra y todo el honor por los siglos de los siglos amén y amén If we can stand, please stand to join us so that you can join us in this time of, I think it's a time of faith and a time of wonder. One of the things that Pastor mentioned about being still, I think it's, to some of us, it's easy, but to others, it's not. Especially if you're very squirmy, <laughs> standing still. Stand still, children. You can't. I bet you they can't stand still. But the Lord is teaching us to be still. And one of the things that I learned this week, knowing that the, I've been learning this week, is that the Lord has already allowed the veil that covered our faces ripped. And our presence before God, it's as free as anyone can have. How many get, are, get very happy when you're on an airplane, on a flight, and they tell you, oh, we had this inconvenience, but Here's a free ticket for another fi flight. Who gets very happy when that happens? <laughs> I get happy. Hey, I got a free ticket for another flight. Well, the Lord has given us a free ticket for his entrance, for his flight. And one of the things that I've discovered is that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's always freedom, right? We know this. But many of us don't feel that freedom. And I just want to share to you that it says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, verses 18, says that whoever turns, anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, it says, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with who? With unveiled faces, that's us, contemplate the Lord's glory, that's us, are being transformed, that's us, into his image with an ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So I want us to join today with us as long as we praise him, as we lift hallelujahs. And a hallelujah is when we shout, when we shout hallelujah, we shout praise the Lord. So I want us all to praise the Lord with this new song. I think you have heard this song, but this is a song, like I said, of faith and wonders because that's who Jesus is. He has ripped that veil so that we could be in the presence of the Lord with the free, a free heart, a free will, and knowing that nothing will separate us from his love. And in his name we find he died on the cross, ripping that veil because of his love for us. Name that shakes the mountain tops. The only word that breaks the curses are your name, the one that covers all. It's higher than the others, higher than the others. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh. 
his life. Oh, call his name. In the time of pain, we call his name. Hallelujah. In the time of peace and still, it's just Jesus. you to say this phrase, just say it, there is power. wonderful to call a name that it's so familiar for our lives a name which we find power a name that has been given to us so that when we have a time of need we call upon him there is a prayer that this person this friend of mine has said and I was sharing it with the pastor and it's a prayer that he did for me and that he did for you many, many, many years ago. Did you know that there was, some, there was someone 2,000, I'm going to say less than 2,000 years ago, because he was born about 2,000 years himself. But that there's a friend that prayed for you. I'm, I'm not sure who's the oldest person in this place. But even so, he prayed for you. He prayed for me. But one of the things that he said is this my prayer is not for them alone I also pray for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one father 
just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them as even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory that you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them too. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? He did that for you and me. And he remains faithful through the ages. I don't know how many generations in your life, in your family have passed to this day that you're standing here. Maybe your parents or your grandparents made a covenant with God and you're standing here. I want you to close your eyes. I don't want you to just close your eyes right there. This is the time just between you and God. And the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And His eyes are upon us. Is your faithfulness to me? Great is your faithfulness to it is good to praise you, Lord. From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, in this morning. We praise you, Jesus. The earth may pass away. Your word remains the same. Thank you, Lord. Nothing you can do. You're faithful and you're true. Though the storm may come and the wind may
to read Psalms 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to his name almost high. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Well, let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this day. You have blessed us with so many things. Lord, I know I feel blessed in many different areas from the kids praying for me this morning to the worship to your people that you have created and that we share this together. So be with us today that the Holy Spirit may be here, that your word may be shared and it's not my word that our eyes will be open, our ears attentive to have what you have for us. And I just thank you. In your name, amen. Good morning. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for your prayers on the behalf of Janelle and Lena. I know there's a couple of us that are looking forward to having them back. Yeah. So... We've been doing this mini-series um, that the LMC has presented, um, The Invitation to Come. And uh, there's three sections. The Invitation, Just Follow, and Always More. And if you lost yours, or uh, if you're new here today, there are some in the back, and I have plenty. So come and see me if you would like to have this card. This is a great reference. It has blessed me in many ways. So uh, they build on each other, and Pastor Jeff has shared the first one, and then David. So you can always go back and watch that. I encourage you to do that. But in this spring, when the conference shared this, God has shown me something special for each uh, picture. And I would just like to share that real quick. So this invitation of the door, um, real quick, he spoke to me about this old man, new man that we are. And this invitation that he's inviting us to become this new man. Jesus has done something amazing in your life. And there's different situations in my life that I have tasted and seen that awesome light. Unfortunately, the old man kicks in once in a while, and I feel like I hit the side of that door. Maybe you can relate. But yet, I want to experience and taste what God has for me. So he's inviting us to come into his presence. And like I shared last week, um, just follow, um, I shared that story of when I was a runner and the experience I had running in the mountains where I had a bear run out in front of me. And that fear, we have this fear today of not knowing what's around us, but yet God is inviting us just to follow him, to trust him. And it's a picture for me that when I was running, I remember it was an open field, and it was open and bright, regardless of that bear that was right there or the fears in the world today, that we need to just trust him. And he's inviting us to come. And today, our picture, always more. He has shown me something special in that, in which that is coming later, and I'll share that later. So, first of all, I'd like to read this. On the back, it reads this. 
as we walk with Jesus, we discover that God pours abundant grace into our lives. The flow of grace never ends. We are leaky vessels like clay jars that are cracked and broken. But there's always more of his grace, even in our brokenness. He uses us, fills us, filled with his love and grace. We are joined together with others in the body of Christ to fulfill the work of the kingdom. Hear the Lord say, come, live in my joy. So the question I ask you, what is this abundant grace to us? This grace that God is pouring into our lives. Well, grace is God giving the greatest treasure to the least deserving, which is every one of us. Grace is more than mercy. Grace is a blessing that we don't deserve. Grace from God includes forgiveness, reconciliation, abundant life, eternal treasure, the Holy Spirit, and a place in heaven with him someday. Oh, what a day. So it's a gift. When God gives a gift, he gives it freely. He's not expecting anything in return, and there is no strings attached. And I believe to understand grace, we need to remember who we were without Christ and who we are with Christ. Um, So before Christ, we were born in sin, breaking God's laws. We were his enemies, unrighteous, spiritually blind, unclean, and dead. But came grace. So the question I ask is, are we living in the abundant grace? Are we taking advantage of this gift Christ has given you? A gift needs to be opened. We need to receive it, and we need to open it. It needs to be used. But this is hard, because maybe you're thinking, I'm not worthy of this gift. I am broken. I have, must, I have, I have messed up too greatly, and I have to earn it. Or, or maybe I'm too old, or I'm too young. These are the questions we ask. So I invite you to turn to me, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, we're going to read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It's in your pew Bibles, page 1, eight, or I'm sorry, 818, if you want to turn there. Um, chapter 4, we're going to be reading verses 6 through 12. For God who said, let light out of the darkness, let let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, not crushed, perplexed, not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around us in our body of death is Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our bodies. For we who are alive will always be given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in your mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Wow. Well, a little background. This is Paul's letter to the Church of Corinthians. And he says, we have a treasure in jars of clay. The treasure we have is Jesus Christ. Not only the salvation and the gospel message, but also this abundant grace he gives us. I want to look at this illustration, jars of clay. And why did Paul pick this illustration? Today, we can't really relate to jars of clay or pots, clay pots in daily life. But in Paul's time, 
a jar of clay was something that everyone could relate to. The poor, the rich. It was something they used daily for multiple reasons. They used it for cooking. They were using it for storing stuff, transporting things. But unfortunately, a clay pot was very fragile and easily broken. Oh, I'm sorry. That was supposed to happen. So you can imagine in Paul's time, these clay pots and broken pieces everywhere. Actually, in Jerusalem, outside of the town, there was a field or a valley that was filled with clay pieces. And for them, clay was very easy to get a hold of. It was something that didn't cost a lot. So that's how they could relate to that. Wow, it wasn't supposed to break that much. <laughs> Natalie, it worked. So this comparison of us to a clay jar goes all the way back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 7 reads, And the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. There is nothing special about the dust of the ground or the clay of the earth when he formed us. It is only when God breathed his life into us that we became something valuable. So this idea through to the illustration of treasure and jars of clay. Clay jars, which were nothing special, they were ordinary, everyday, but inside the clay jar is the treasure. We are just earthly vessels, vessels made out of clay, but God breathed his spirit into us. We became a vessel to house the very presence of the person of God. Wow, what a treasure. Brothers and sisters, this is what gets me about this story, though. You know, we work so hard to be this perfect, polished, shiny vessel so we can do God's work, kingdom work. We desperately want to give the impression that we got it all together, that we are enough, that we don't have questions or doubts or failures. And we forget that God intentionally chose a weak vessel as an illustration because it's the very crack in the hole that his love shines through. The focus was never supposed to be on the vessel. It's put, it was the treasure that is inside the vessel. So, yeah. As you see this picture, uh, take the time and ponder on this picture. What do you notice? Unfortunately, uh, it's not showing the full picture like it says on here. But if you notice, it's cracked. There's holes. And on the full picture, it is pouring out the bottom and it's puddling all around. Even in our brokenness, he uses us and he wants to fill us. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power was made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness insults, and hardships, and persecutions, and difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. And so we get, so when we can get a glimpse and grasp the absolutely amazing gift of grace that God continually pours into our lives, this flowing of grace never runs out. It never dries up. It's always available and accessible for all of our brokenness and weakness, our headaches, 
are hard stuff. And once we understand this and experience it and believe that God loves us, that we have value, and that he has plans and purpose for us, not only in spite of, but because of our weaknesses and our brokenness, we begin to live in freedom in this abundance of grace. Hear the Lord saying, come, live in my grace. There's always more. So like I shared before, um, God showed me something special with this painting. And I would like to share what God showed me with this picture. God showed me the story of the woman in the alabaster jar. So if you can turn with me to Mark chapter 14. I'm going to be reading from Mark 14. And that is in your pew Bible 719 if you want to go there. We're going to be reading verses 3 through 9. While he was in Bethany, reclining, just take the time and just picture what is going on in this scene. Soak it in. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the, the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor will always be with you, and you can help them anytime you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare me for my burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will always be told in the memory of her. So we gather here in the Gospels, especially in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, that this woman is Mary. She is the sister of Martha and Lazarus. Mary was on a journey for about three years with Jesus. And she observed him, and she was taught by him. Jesus often stayed with her in her home there in Bethany as well. But recently, Jesus performed amazing Miracle when she, when, I'm sorry, when he brought her brother Lazarus back to life several days when he was in the tomb. This event takes place a few days before Jesus' crucifixion and burial. It seems that Martha, or I'm sorry, Mary's action here was very intentional and also timely. This anointing prepared Jesus' body for burial. So in Bible times, alabaster boxes or jars were made of a rich marble stone, alabaster. And alabaster was a stone that was commonly found there in, in Israel. And these alabaster jars would be filled with expensive perfume. Um, and to keep them pure and unspoiled. And they also would seal them with wax to retain it, to preserve the scent. Mary experienced Jesus' love and grace in her life. And her response was heartfelt worship and surrender of her most valuable possession. She loved Jesus. She was devoted to him. This was her act of worship. True, pure, intentional worship. Just like the nard perfume in the container. Pure. Mary had experienced Jesus' love. I'm sorry, yeah. She had nothing to hold back. In order to get the Nord out of the alabaster jar, it had to be broken, and all of it poured out. It wasn't one of those things where you open it and just poured it out a little bit in a controlled manner, and then save some, and pour a little bit more out for another time. No. She broke the jar, 
And she poured all of it. She didn't hold anything back. The Nard was valued at more than one year's wages. Mary gave her most valuable possession. She was willing to give everything to Jesus, even though others around her were criticizing her and questioned her actions. I can imagine that several days later, the scent of the Nard perfume was lingering on Jesus' body as he was taunted, beat, and died on the cross for all humanity. I wonder if the Ramoma of the Nard lingered on Jesus and probably lifted his heart and thought of Mary and what she has done for him. Jesus said, wherever the gospel is preached through the world, what she has done will always be told in the memory of her. Jesus is looking for believers like Mary. Believers who are willing to give it all to Jesus and break open the jar at his feet. Believers who honor Jesus in true worship for a heart of devotion. Believers who aren't more concerned about what people around them say than how God is leading them to obey and worship in complete surrender. So, how does this alabaster jar complete surrender living loop back to the clay jar from the opening? I think that when we experience God's abundant grace in our lives, we desire to break open the alabaster jar in our life and give Jesus our all. What God is pouring into us, he wants us to pour out to those around us. And this happens even through the brokenness and the cracks in our lives. Your testimonies need to be shared. Mary didn't hold back even when the disciples and the men around her called her actions foolish. We can't allow what the world says of us to hold us back or make us want to cover up our cracks, our imperfections, but boldly share your stories. God's grace for us and more grace to share. We learn from Mary that true worship is a life poured out in response to a God who emptied himself into us. And as he emptied himself for us and continues to empty himself into us, so we empty ourselves for him. There is always more, more of God's grace for us and more for us to share. Um, So lastly, there is another jar I want you to look at. Yes, that's a photo of me. This is a broken clay vessel. Yeah. God has, Paul has encouraged me to see more clearly who I am and how God wants to use me. I want to get to a place like Mary did where I automatically break into true worship and give him everything. Holding nothing back. Not worrying what the world or people around me say. Instead, I want to be a clay vessel where the abundance of grace that God is pouring into me flows through me, over me, and out of me. Even in my brokenness. What a challenge. I invite you to take this time to uh, listen to a song. The song is called Alabaster Jar. And I'm sorry, those who are listening by live stream, we're going to have to shut it off for copyright purposes, but there will be a link that you could watch it. So I just invite you to take the time and just listen to the song and meditate on it.
as I end in prayer, I didn't really plan this, but if you feel led like Mary and you want to give your all to him, I invite you to do that, however that looks like. If you want to come up front here and pour yourself out, if you don't know who Jesus is in your life and you want to experience this abundant grace to have this true freedom, I invite you to come front. If you want more, God is pouring out more for you. I just invite you, lift your hands, bow before him, just like this song. He's asking us to come, this invitation to come. And if you want prayer, there's plenty of individuals around here who are more than willing to pray for you. That's what the body of Christ is all about. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day you have given us. I just thank you for the example of Mary who eyes were opened and has experienced you, has experienced your grace and everything that she had, she poured out for you. Lord, may we be like that, willing to pour it out for you, for your honor and your glory. Lord, help us And open our eyes that we can stop looking like these shiny vessels. Because it's not about the vessel. It's about that treasure that you put inside of us. About your love, your grace that you want us to share of those around us. And at times we feel like we're broken. We messed up too much. Lord, nobody's going to understand. But it's in those moments that your beautiful love shines for those people around us. Lord, so I pray that each individual here, even though we're just clay vessels, but we're more than that. We are these valuable vessels that you have created and you have poured yourself into. So be with us as we go into this world, regardless of what the world is saying around us. And it's getting harder and harder. One day, you're going to be there, and we'll be in your presence. So keep us strong as we anticipate that day. In Jesus' name, amen. I think in that same presence, in this same moment that we find ourselves, it's a time to lift the Lord's name high in humbleness because that's what he's seeking, a heart that is humble and obedient. And Pastor, thank you for that word. Thank you. I identify myself with a broken vessel. And I think that um, just um, the Bible before that I read, it said that, uh, I'm trying to find verse 18, one second. I can't find it, oh. That the Lord, can't find it right now, but the Lord is calling us to testify. And Pastor, he just mentioned that that he wants the Lord wants us to testify what he the goodness that he has done in our lives. And like he put a picture of this broken vessel. <laughs> I should have brought my picture too. Because in the middle of brokenness, that is a testimony for others to praise God and to share his gospel to others. So please stand with us as we sing this last song. <coughs> Because in the middle of the storm, the Lord is there. And the Lord is inviting us, like you guys have read and have learned, to come into his presence. But we don't come into his presence with empty hands. And I don't think there's any money, gold, silver, 
I don't know, you can name it, crops, <laughs> corn, I don't know what else, harvest enough to come into his presence and give him as a thanksgiving, but a humble heart. Amen? So let us praise him. Our praises, let us raise the hallelujah. It says raise the hallelujah, let us raise, let us sing out loud that we praise him. In the middle of the storms, God is there. So let us sing to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing with us, church. Hallelujah. We praise you. We give you thanks, Lord. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. In this time of need, Lord. I raise a hallelujah. We praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. So that the world may hear. I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Yes, Lord. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Listen to this. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Kevin, for that challenge 
always more, always more the illustration. What I gathered from this, what I've sensed in my spirit was it's the focus is not on the vessel. I think you mentioned this. It's on the treasure inside. It's not the container. It's the content that is important. It's also not a sealed container or vessel, not something at one time and still you never use it. No, we're not a sealed container. And then the thought came to me, you know, Jeff, a cracked jar leaks. That's the point. That's the point. We don't have to be perfect. We always think we have to be, oh, I can't share this. I can't do that. I, I don't know enough. I'm, I, I'm not perfect. No. The point is, cracked jars leak. With all our imperfections, the content that's put into us needs to be shared. So again, thank you, Kevin, for that, those visuals and just that challenge for each one of us. Always more. Even though the, we're leaking, always more. Not always enough. We had talked about it. Not always enough. Always more. So again, thank you, Kevin. As we go, be prepared to leak <laughs> all over the place because you will continue to be filled as well. Uh, just a reminder for next Sunday is our first Sunday. Uh, I'll give opportunity at the opening of this, our, my sermon to uh, have a time of sharing. Folks to share, you can share how you leaked this past coming week. Um, and uh, as we get into our time of worship next week, and the sermon. So just a reminder, time for sharing. As we go, take this prayer, benediction that Paul writes to the church of Thessalonica, where he writes this, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Go in peace and be leaking. Peace.